There is an unexploded bomb sat on the seabed off the coast of England. In fact, there's 15,000 of them, and they could explode at any moment. If they did, the blast could be the biggest non-nuclear explosion in history, causing a 13-meter high tsunami that raced towards London. So the question is, what can be done to disarm this ticking time bomb? This is the SS Richard Montgomery shipwreck. This is the bomb in the Thames. The wreck was an American military cargo ship that was traveling from Philadelphia to London, packed with the delivery of ammunition and explosives for use in World War II. As she approached London, a heavy storm hit. The ship drifted into shallow waters and hit a sandbank. The hull split into two and she sank. Salvage crews worked day and night to offload the explosives on board. But when the UK government refused to pay workers fairly for the risks they were exposed to, all salvage efforts stopped, leaving the equivalent of 1,560 metric tons of TNT still on board, including phosphorus bombs, cluster fragmentation bombs, and high explosive bombs weighing nearly 1,000 kilograms. This is what a single 1,000 kilogram high explosive bomb looks like. It was discovered on the campus of the University of Exeter in England and exploded with a controlled detonation. Buildings within 100 meters of the blast were damaged. A large crater was formed and debris was thrown 250 meters away. This bomb contained the equivalent of 0.6 metric tons of TNT. And here is what an explosion with the equivalent of 1,100 metric tons of TNT looks like. This blast in Beirut in 2020 happened when a fire broke out in a warehouse containing ammonium nitrate. It caused $15 billion worth of damage, and the shockwave was felt as far away as Turkey, Syria, and even Cyprus, over 240 kilometers away. So it's staggering to think that the SS Richard Montgomery is carrying a cargo of explosives far more powerful and destructive than this and yet almost nothing has been done to make them safe. Now we know the scale of the explosives on board, what risk does it pose today? Scientists predict that if the wreck were to explode, a tower of water, mud and shrapnel would be sent three kilometers into the air. Every window in a 50 kilometer radius would be shattered. A 13 meter high tsunami would race up the River Thames, heading straight into the city of London. The River Thames has an inbuilt flood barrier to protect against rising water levels, but these take 90 minutes to raise, far too slow to give London any protection if the wreck was to explode. And in the other direction, the wall of water would flow directly towards one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world. Nearby to the wreck, is Europe's biggest natural gas storage site. In the event of a tsunami caused by the blast, experts are concerned that a secondary, much bigger explosion could occur. Similar to the blast at the Fukushima nuclear power plant in Japan in 2011. So what do you do with a problem like the SS Richard Montgomery? Experts agreed that the best time to dismantle the bombs was in August 1944, when the ship first sank. But the second best time is today. A risk assessment published by the UK government said that the wreck would start to collapse in 10 to 20 years, and that the explosion of one bomb could start a chain reaction across the 14 to 16,000 bombs on board. Doing nothing, according to the report, was no longer an option. Time had run out. That report was published in 2001. Since then, those in charge of the wreck have made very little progress. Can't we just send in a bomb squad to take out the explosives? But the reality is, after decades of sitting underwater, it's impossible to establish what condition the explosives are in. Nobody really knows if they're safe or ready to blow. And any interference with the wreck, even just to disarm the bombs, only increases the risk further. The government has faced a challenge like this before. In 1946, 
A similar American ship carrying a mix of explosives and equipment sank off the coast of Folkestone in England. In the recovery attempt, 100 metric tons of explosives on board were accidentally detonated. This caused a 150 meter high column of water, a magnitude 4.5 earthquake, and 6.4 kilometers away in Folkestone, buildings were damaged. The SS Richard Montgomery has 1,460 metric tons more explosives on board. Removing the bombs safely presents a huge risk and a logistical challenge. Even to discover the current state of the bombs, planning and surveys of the wreck would take years. It would require over 40,000 people to evacuate their homes during the recovery efforts. And this process is likely to take at least six months. It seems safely disposing of the cargo is just out of the question. So what else can be done? Official documents show plans for an enormous Chernobyl-style sarcophagus built around the wreck. Then, with the blast area contained, a controlled detonation would safely destroy the cargo. But now we know we are in the period where the bombs are at their most sensitive. Any construction project of this magnitude would only increase the chance of triggering the bombs rather than reducing the risk. Another proposed solution is to build a 1.8 km wide cofferdam around the wreck. Once in place, any explosion, intentional or not, would be protected within the walls. This sounds great in theory, but when we consider the fragility of the wreck and her contents, and the intense groundwork needed to build a dam around the wreck, once again, this solution only increases the risks involved. This is probably why each government in charge have so far chosen a third option, do nothing. Since the ship sank over 78 years ago, the UK government have done almost nothing. Each new administration simply passes on the responsibility to the next. Spontaneous combustion is not the only concern about the SS Richard Montgomery. There's also the possibility of human error, of someone interfering with the wreck. The government established a 100 meter wide exclusion zone to deter people from coming too close. But despite this, the masts have become a legendary local landmark. In the 1960s, people used to climb aboard the masts to fish. Tourist boat trips at low tide are a regular occurrence. And in 2017, a paddleboarder posted this picture on social media of him holding on to the masts themselves. And it's not just tourists that are the problem. Between 1944 and 1978, 28 ships reported a near-miss collision. Then, in 1980, in foggy conditions, a cargo ship traveling through the nearby shipping lane drifted off course and came within 15 meters of the wreck. In the same year, a tanker carrying 1,597 metric tons of poisonous and flammable chemicals found itself on a direct course with the wreck due to poor visibility. A collision was only avoided six minutes before the ship would have slammed directly into the wreck. Since then, the number of near misses has not been made public. But what we do know is that over 5,000 vessels pass by the wreck each year, with the Coast Guards occasionally being called in to help with the safe evacuation of boats that steered too close. In all the years since the ship sank, the first significant action was taken in October 2021. UK-based company Briggs Marine Contractors were awarded the contract at a value of 4.6 million pounds, 6.2 million dollars. In removing the masts, the government aims to reduce the pressure they put on the hull and the cargo, or maybe it could be a way of deterring visitors by removing the iconic local landmark. Since the plans were published to remove the masts, Tourist trips to see them have been so popular that local boat owners have been putting on extra trips to meet the demand. People want a last chance to see the masts 
and imagine what lies beneath before they disappear forever. There's no doubt that shipwrecks like this, especially ones with thousands of unexploded bombs, they carry a certain drama and peril that make for great headlines around the world. But for the residents living near the Thames and its estuary, including the Isle of Sheppey, Southend-on-Sea, and the City of London, and for the 5,000 ships that pass by the wreck each year, every day they take their lives in their hands, just hoping the bombs don't explode. <laughs>